Okay, this is the topic, uh, national policy and Sri Lankan economy. Actually, here there are two parts. One is to learn about some national policies. And also in the second lecture, we will try to learn about the prevailing uh, situation of the Sri Lankan economy. Uh, but there is a, only one question. In, in that question, there are two parts. And one, one part is related to national policy and other part is related to the Sri Lankan economy. In here, I am uh, giving some basic concepts and the frameworks of national policies, mainly regarding the energy policy and the transport policy. But I will try to explain some other sectors as well. Mainly, uh, once you go through these notes, you can identify there are so many policies in Sri Lanka, but you, you can think about yourself what has happened to these policies. Okay, actually policies are there. There are so many uh, shortcomings in the decision making and the implementation. And uh, with the present situation of the Sri Lankan, uh, not only the economy, overall Sri Lanka, uh, you can see what what kind of contribution, that means what kind of impact due to these inconsistent policies and the lack of implementation of the policies, but every sector having very good policies in Sri Lanka. And also, uh, maybe I am not saying the second day, maybe uh, we may spend around one and a half hours uh, regarding the national policies. After that, we will start the Sri Lankan economy. Uh, I will give you a basic uh, snapshot of the Sri Lankan economy and we will uh, next day we will try to learn about the present challenges and how to overcome these concepts. In here, uh, do not think you should uh, learn all these economic terms and other things. No need to learn like that. Only main concern is, is as a general engineer, how do you analyze? the Sri Lankan economy with the present context. Okay. And these are the expected outcome. Uh, they have mentioned about the uh, this particular question. This is given by the IESL. Actually, in here, mainly they are uh, target, uh, they are expected outcomes mainly related to the uh, Sri Lankan economy and national policies, but I thought uh, I will teach first national policy and the Sri Lankan economy here. Potential for the development of Northeast and Southeast, forms of government, concept of good governance, government economic policies, fiscal policy, what is growth and development of an economy, balance of payment, inflation, this education, employment, unemployment, social harmony, peace initiatives, war and terrorism, major constraint in resolution, energy policies, transportation policy, major infrastructure development projects, uh, government structure, and all, so, so many things are there, but do not, not think, lot of things you are here, in economy, all the things are there, but here I am just focusing mainly on the present context of the Sri Lankan economy. Why? Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is not a question to check your uh, economics knowledge, mainly related to your general knowledge on Sri Lankan economy, mainly uh, what has happened to Sri Lanka at present and how to overcome these present challenges. And mm, to study those things, we need some economic terms. That means Sri Lankan economic parameters and the economic terms. Those things I will uh, try to teach you, but no need to memorize anything. This is a very general knowledge question, but at least now I think your exams, uh, they have uh, scheduled on four. So 16th, I, 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 can't, I think next, not this Sunday, maybe the next Saturday or Sunday. Uh, just go through my notes 
at least listen to the today's lecture maybe listen to the day-to-day -day news then definitely you can write these questions i know that the majority of the students uh, they have uh, answered this question i think more than i think pre uh, previous years more than 300 students sat for the exam uh, out of 300 more than nearly 200 students they have uh, answered to this particular question because this is mainly a somewhat general knowledge question okay now key policies in our national policy framework of the government constitutes 10 key policies aimed at achieving the fourfold outcome of productive citizenry contended family discipline and just society and the prosperous nation that means why we need the policy to, uh, to have a prosperous prosperous nation now now think about every time if we have this kind of policies why sri lanka uh, ha has faced to this kind of present situation i think once you learn these con policy concepts you may can easily develop your answers to the any question uh, during the exam now our uh, main priority i think every country whatever the policies they uh, initiate their priority would be the national security that means that means not only the now when you uh, mention the national security you may think okay we have to have army navy air force police to uh, safeguard the country not only the safeguard the country it's like secure work environment that means now uh, okay maybe you have to uh, safeguard from the terrorism or maybe the foreign invasions as well as within the country you should have a secure working environment country free from drugs those things now if you want to elaborate you can elaborate more uh, about everything regarding the national security but do not uh, memorize all the things but uh, take the key points of these uh, presentations an efficient country free from corruption now that's also identified as a key policy that means free from corruption now free from corruption means an efficient governance mechanism i think now think think your mine whether i don't know maybe some of you will work in government sector some will work in private sector you can see now okay maybe as an engineer definitely you have to uh, go and work with the government institutions you have to get their app approvals then you can you will face uh, uh, this kind of uh, situation an efficient government mechanism whether uh, uh, we do have an efficient government mechanism but uh, now everyone is telling if we have a systems we can overcome the corruption but do we have the systems just think about okay. then uh, but we are having a very clear government policy actually that's the second priority government policy the first priority is national security okay maybe second priority means that would be the starting point of the national policy that means a government policy having a very clearly defined it has a an efficient country free from corruption then state enterprises management policy now most of the sri lankan people they think state-owned enterprises their managements are fail, weak and uh, that contributes to a collapse of the economy then friendly non-aligned foreign policy now that's also there now friendly non-aligned that means now i think uh, in the uh, international relations you will learn there are two allies that means previously after world war ii uh, some countries aligned with the soviet russia uh, other countries aligned with the united states of america 
then these are the two factors. Then they had uh, some two uh, facts also, that means uh, Warsaw and the NATO. That facts also there. Then uh, new constitution that fulfills people's wishes. That's also identified as the key policy. But okay, every time we are talking about we, every government, they will say we will change our constitution we will change our constitution i think from 2015 this framework i think they have uh, uh, identified and published in 2015 that's why here mentioned as the governance mechanism this is under good governance that's the concept of the theme of that particular government previously also we uh, sri lanka had the policy framework but uh, uh, this is the latest national policy framework available uh, uh, in Sri Lanka. Productive citizenry and vibrant human resource. Then people-centric economic development, macroeconomic targets, new tax policies, cost of living, export crops. Now, if they uh, target and achieve these things. Now you can think whether Sri Lanka will face this kind of situation or not. Then technology-based society, global innovation hub, IT entrepreneurship, citizen-centric digital government. Now some they may have uh, implemented some places now digital government now everywhere we are talking about if we adopt the systems we can uh, overcome the corruption one best example at the passport office uh, now they are having a uh, e-passport service okay maybe there are lapses but once they inter uh, introduce that kind of service automatically uh, uh these corruption related activities will resolve that 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 does not mean it's 100 percent free but every genuine person can go through the process and obtain obtain their services very easy then development of physical resources that's also very much important sri lanka as a i as an island we are having so many physical resources now, these resources, uh, Sri Lanka has to capture and uh, market these resources. Otherwise, Sri Lanka may not get the uh, foreign currency. That's also identified as the key policies. Then, sustainable environmental management. That's also they have identified as a key policy. Now, under that, they have made identified lands industries waste management biodiversity settlements and cities environmental education now here just think about the settlements and cities it, it's identified as a key, key policy element under the sustainable environmental management but when you go through what, what whatever the city in sri lanka you can see there are so many uh, uh, unauthorized as well as unplanned settlements and most of the cities were developed in an unplanned manner maybe due to the political in influences they have developed these cities maybe some particular person's vision they may have developed some cities but they have not uh, looked at the overall contribution of this sustainable environmental management as a, a holistic as an as a holistic approach okay? discipline law abiding and values based society now when you read these 10 key policy items i think you can get a very good idea about that sri lanka having a very good policy framework but main issue is whether we are having a proper implementation mechanism now we'll go through some sectors now when you see the sector policy i'm not going into detail about every sector i'm just telling now uh, normally i think you know in sri lanka there are so many ministries now these ministries they 
normally these ministries they are categorized as a sectors then education sector then assuring that no child is left behind that's the theme of the education sector policy no child is left behind i think uh, whether this uh, policy is there or not in sri lanka you know that there are free education from grade 1 to grade 12 that means all the throughout that period okay there are inconsistencies or lack of educational uh, facilities and other things uh, after that also uh, free education at university level every up to higher education institutes and that's the aim of the education that means now on education their main uh, main theme is no child is left behind now based on these uh, key sector policies individual ministries or individual implementation agencies they have to develop their objectives to achieve these policies then higher education enhancing the quality and relevance of the university education to produce professionally competent and capable graduates to meet socio-economic development in the country now just think about now the present situation now every, every day you can hear that there are so many uh, professionals they are leaving from the country especially the university lecturers as well then you can think whether we can achieve these keys this uh, higher education sector policies in a appropriate manner now uh, to achieve these uh, policies definitely you have to sustain you have to keep and sustain these professionals within the sri lanka otherwise with uh, our universities may not able, able to produce the capable graduates now why sri lankan universities what uh, why government is spending so much money for the free education uh, their main objective is to uh, utilize these gradu un graduates to uh, uh, go to the government objectives like to meet socio-economic development in the country i think until recently there are a lot of professionals they are working uh, their main objective to develop the country but due to this present situation most of the professionals they are leaving the country skills development and vocational training making a the Sri Lankan skilled enabling full employment in the global economy while improving their competency now I think uh, now you know that Sri Lanka we are sending so many uh, ladies for the uh, for, uh, foreign jobs mainly for the housemaids or maybe the uh, industries like garments and other things but they are uh okay they are uh, number is very high but if sri lanka can send some skilled workers maybe at the lower level let's say not i am not telling only the housemaids and garment industries other levels also maybe the uh, construction field maybe the automobile industries if we can send the skilled workers or maybe the uh, persons having maybe technical knowledge uh, they can give some vocational training maybe the some level two three qualifications and if they if government send them they can earn more foreign currency than sending the housemates and the garment sector then labor labor protecting the rights of the workers and achieve healthy industrial relations now that's also very much important now uh, let's say when a country 
uh, go, go, uh, developing towards the industrial industrialism definitely you have to write protect the rights of the workers because every time this private sector or maybe the government sector has still their main object view is to get the work but they are not thinking about the occupational health safety uh, that kind of aspect uh, now we should have a policy labor policies that means uh, this policy itself give the guideline to every employer employee employers to give the basic needs and and their main uh, emphasis is to protect the rights of the workers and also achieve healthy industrial relations otherwise most of the private sector they will work purely for the profit oriented objectives and they may ignore the uh, workers rights and the healthy working environment then health sector improving national health service targeting a healthy nation with necessary institutional and policy reforms and increase investment on health while recognizing importance of coexistence of different forms of medicine participation of private sector in health service now i think this is a very hot topic now in sri lanka we are having a very good health sector previously but now it has been deteriorated now that will be fitted due to the uh, leaving of professional professional as well as uh, lack of good quality medicine as well and also when this uh, private sector participation now do you think uh, they are uh, providing the services at a reasonable cost that's also you have to think now whatever the policy okay uh, government may request the private uh sector to participate to enhance the health sector they will open up so many private hospitals maybe the challenging centers all the things but it's now like a, a very commercialized thing and prices they are uh, requesting to higher prices and it's purely profit oriented business like that but that's not the policy say then sports i'm not going into the everything in here detail uh, because we will just go through mainly related to the uh, engineering side but everywhere uh, now in sports also it's mentioned uh, you should not take the uh, banned things It, uh, you have to produce that's why they introduce sports to the uh, rural areas then the school levels everywhere that's under government policy key sector policy and uh, to achieve these uh, policies uh, relevant ministries institutions they will have their own uh, objective then culture and heritage science and technology and research that very important thing building capacity and strengthening of research and development through intensification of advancement of dissemination as well as the application of knowledge in state of art technology i think uh, with this policy I, you may heard that there is an institute called nanotechnology they have uh, initiated this nanotechnology institute on the science technology and research uh, why to facilitate the sri lankan industries to get these innovative products then information and communication technology now that's the most important thing now the, i think uh, one of the key policy item is the digitalization now with this digitalization con sets they use into the mainly in the government sector now uh, previously you 
if you go to a government office, you can see most of the work are manual work. There are so many people, they do all the manual works to enter the uh, information. So many books they are using, but now they have introduced so many uh, software applications. Uh, they are using, they have introduced uh, online methods, so many things. Now, just think about the passport office, maybe examination department. Now, all the examinations you have to register through the online mechanisms, then driving license. Uh, you can get the appointment through the online mechanism, but still, there are so many things to improve that. Now, still, we couldn't get the uh driving license to print that that kind of lack of uh, lack of uh, implementations are there okay but by introducing this digitalization concept you can overcome the co corruption related activities why right? now why you let's say if you want to go and do a work at RME. There are so many unauthorized people, they will come and say, okay, I will do the work if you give this kind of money. But if you have a proper system, you can upload all the things. No need to go. Now, just think about this e-revenue license scheme. Now, once you take the insurance of the vehicle, once you take the uh, uh, emission test certificate, you can log into that particular website and uh, you can get apply for the revenue license online itself. But okay, maybe there would be uh, some additional charge that's like a convenience fee, but no need to go and stay along a queue to get the license. Now, still the uh, old mechanism also still there with uh, some additional convenience fee, you can get the, uh, your revenue license easily through the uh, online platform. Now, that, that, that kind of facility, so many things are now available with this digital, digitalization uh, policy framework. And that, that is the common policy framework. Individual institutes, they should adopt and implement these policies then that implementation lack of implementation that is the most uh, vulnerable issue in sri lanka and also the negative uh, political influence now everywhere these ministers uh, they are controlling the ministries then let's say if they if the particular ministry wants to uh, call for a beat or the tender then there are so many political influencers will appear and ultimately sometimes there are court cases, there are uh, delays of implementation and it may lead to cancel the tenders even. Or otherwise, they will award the tenders for a very poor quality companies and they may not be able to complete their uh task as intended by the uh, national policies then crop agriculture uh, that's the main policy inconsistencies uh, previously we had and i think everyone knows the repercussions of this uh, agriculture based uh, uh, policy inconsistencies. Now, what is the main important? You, you have to have the eco friendly innovative technologies will contribute to achieve inclusive and sustainable economic growth, ensuring food security and food sovereignty. Now, okay, maybe concept may be good if we go for a uh, organic fertilizer. But with can we do it within a uh, one day? That's the main thing. It should be face by face. 
government should implement but with a sudden decision like uh, suddenly uh, they once the government uh, informed to the farmers that from this particular date onwards you have to use only organic fertilizer whether our farmers are ready aware to do that kind of uh, farming methodology because why previously up to now they have used so much so much fertilizer to uh, fertilizer they utilize for their cultivation then it has and that have a, a huge impact on the food security and food sovereignty and ultimately Sri Lanka has to import all the basic food items. Previously, all these were uh, they, uh, available within the Sri Lanka. And ultimately, we have to spend so much of foreign currency to bring the basic foods. Then, livestock development plantation i am not going into the detail about this one now here i am just giving you the key sector policies now once you go through these uh, items you can see every sector i uh, in sri lanka government has identified the key sector policies under the 10 main pillars. Now, what are the 10 main pillars? These are the 10 main pillars. Now, under these 10 main pillars, they have identified key sectors and under that sectors, they have identified individual sector policies. But the problem is how far they have achieved these uh, sector policies and how far they have implemented these policies. Some policies they have implemented, but no feedbacks, no proper mechanism to monitor the progresses and other things. And maybe one minister is initiate that one concept. Maybe the next minister will come and say, this is not the policy you have to adopt. This is the new policy I want to adopt. Likewise, they are changing these policies. Now, uh, best example is uh, this uh, fertilizer policy. Then plantation, fisheries. Now, Sri Lanka is an island nation. Still, we are importing these canned fish, so many things. But uh, all over the island, it's in Sri Lanka, uh, we can easily produce and uh, capture our uh, fish uh, requirement mainly about the fish land and land development that also you have to think now i think there are civil engineers whether sri lanka has utilized our lands and land developments in an effective manner to uh, Plus, uh, to uh, that means to get the main obvious or the to get the uh, output of these lands to uh, achieve the objectives of the land and land development policies then industry that's also a very important thing international trade and foreign investment that also very much important and now uh, we will learn these things under economics as well now to develop a country like sri lanka we may need foreign direct investment normally we call as the fdi foreign direct investment sri lankan only sri lankan entrepreneurs or the sri lankan companies may not be able to invest uh, sufficient manner to uh, develop the Sri Lanka. We should promote this uh, international trade 
as well as these uh, BOI schemes, board of investment, that means trade uh, zones. Uh, we have to give tax benefits. We, we have to give all the infrastructure facilities to these for FDIs. Then only they will come and invest. That means we, we have to have a very uh, transparent country. Then they will, these foreign companies, they will come and invest in Sri Lanka. Now, with the present situation, with all these corruption, all, with all these political influences, all these underworld uh, issues, do you think? these foreign companies will come and invest in Sri Lanka. That's why, uh, okay, maybe government will uh, request them to invest in a secured zone, but in secured zones also, there are so many uh, interferences by these underworld groups as well as the political influences also or not only the political government officials also when granting the approvals so many places these companies ha have to face so many challenges no that's why they want to go for this one-stop solution and so many things but there are a lot of places uh, these implementation strategies they have not implemented as intended by the government policies but government policy they have mentioned ensuring higher trade performance and increased global integration by creating an operational environment while giving due consideration to the increased consumer Welfare. That means in the uh, policy itself, it's mentioned business friendly regulatory and operational environment. Now, uh, once some investor wants to invest in a Sri Lanka, can you imagine whether this policy framework has impl in implemented in a proper way to satisfy this invest? then tourism now everyone is talking about the tourism okay now in our country okay a lot of people they will visit sri lanka but whether the our country is safe for the tourism that's also very much important that's why i told uh, now if now with this present uh, day situations now when you watch a tv uh, watch uh, watch the tv news you can see so many murders happen in sri lanka very recently now with that things whether that will give a good positive uh, influence to the tourism because people they are coming here to spend their holidays in a very free, calm and quiet manner. So many harass harassments, so many uh, undue influences, so many things our people are doing. Then uh, whether this policy and in these implementation agencies, that, that means uh, tourism ministry, maybe the uh, public security, uh, ministry, maybe the police or maybe the other uh, public uh, urban development authorities, maybe the municipal councils, whether they have done their role to facilitate these key sector policies. Uh, then land and transport, the transport policy I will just give in detail, then ports and shipping. Now here, making Sri Lanka the most competitive and preferred port shipping destination in the region. Now, that's the key sector policy. But let's say if one ship arrives to the Colombo port, if suddenly these port workers, they have started a protest or uh, some campaign 
then uh, this these ships they are having very tight schedules they will come here and they will unload or maybe load the goods and their main objective is to reach to the other destination on time let's say with this frequent protest and other things uh, do you think the ship in line whether they will uh, utilize our ports because there are so many other ports they can uh, uh, utilize without coming to Sri Lanka but uh, our location is very important and we can easily attract so many shipping lines to pass through our ports if we have a very good policy implementation method then the same as the aviation now our location we can use this aviation now now think about the uh, airport surrounding airport now you know, if you ask uh, yourself in your mind definitely you will think okay dubai doha singapore maybe you may not think about some indian airport why okay india having a huge uh, population everything but when you consider the international air, air, airport in in generally everyone will think about okay if you want to go to the eastern side or southeast maybe you will go through the singapore if you want to go through the western side you will use the dubai or doha like that why these airports these locations they have developed as a uh, hub for the air transportation then power and energy ensuring energy security by diversification of energy resources an energy mix will be rationalized considering economic cost, environmental impacts, reliability of supplies, convenience to consumers and strategic dependence. Uh, that I will explain in detail because uh, uh, according to your uh, this particular module, we have to learn something in detail about the national energy policy and the national transportation policy that I will touch it uh, after this basic introduction. Then irrigation and water resource development. Now, I think with this present situation, you can understand how much uh, impact happened due to the uh, irrigation and water resource management, uh, lack of water resource management policies. Okay. Now, Sri Lanka is a, uh, mainly our, uh, we are doing farming, that means agriculture based country. That means we have to utilize the water in very effective manner. As a result, we have to manage the water, available water resources. That means every time Sri Lanka has to plan what kind of uh, agricultural mix we have to cultivate what kind of paddy what kind of other crops what kind of water requirement then they have to evaluate what kind of water availability maybe they have to do some future projections based on that uh, we have to uh, give directions to the fa farmers to Okay, maybe this time we are facing for a uh, water scarcity. Then uh, we should reduce the paddy cultivation. And we uh, these institutes, they should say, promote other food crop cultivation. That's kind of uh, mechanism. If we have or not, you have to think. That's the main thing I am telling all these policies are there when we are trying to implement these policies okay government influence through the politician maybe due to the political interferences people maybe because there are so many cases we also know that there are water releases 
because of political influences not only the political influences government of uh, officials also in all in these things due to the lack of planning or whatever the thing we may come across these situations then water supply and sanitation that means safe drinking water and sanitation that's the most important priority when you take the water priorities drinking water is the first priority uh, and ev every time government has to provide water for the drinking water purposes then normally we call it as the livelihood maintaining that means the sanitation for the bathing maybe the washroom facilities everywhere we have to provide the uh, water that's the second priority then irrigation power likewise you can have uh, so many uh, priorities for the utilization of the water then housing and construction now that's also very much important thing uh, housing and construction now okay now you can if you go through the Colombo, maybe around 10 to 15 years back there are there were a lot of slums and there were a lot of unplanned uh, activities were there but now okay you can see so many so much uh, apartments maybe the government they have built this uh, apartment for the uh, poor people people who were living uh, li uh, staying in these slums living in slums they requested these people to uh, shift into these uh apartment for the low income groups and that kind of policy government should have and these policies mainly these housing and construction policies that should be aligned with the urban development policies as well now these urban development policies with that some places they may say okay you can develop only okay two story three story building but uh, uh, your main objective is to go with the sustainable city development mechanisms uh, that's very important thing then judicial system then public management that's also very important thing now in public management now i think you know in sri lanka we are having divisional secretaries uh, district secretaries then the gramanila dari then uh, uh, urban councils municipal councils pradeshiya sabha those maybe the provincial councils then the parli uh, uh, parliament those are the institutes or the places we are talking about public management then how do we uh, make efficient management systems in these organizations now just think if you want to get the approval for your house plan what kind of difficult protocols we have to pass through because we do not have proper mechanisms all are depend on person that's the thing uh, this is just an example i am telling but let's say uh, some play the same way now if you want to go and get the service from the this division and secretary office whether these services are provided in an efficient manner still okay maybe now it's far better than when you compare with around five to ten years back now so many uh digitalization concepts and everything is there uh, but still we, there are so many improvements they have to carry out then social integration that's also very much important now sri lanka having multi-ethnicity country then multi-religious then we have to be, rebuild reassure re-establish harmony in political 
economic and social sphere. That's also very important. Now, without this, country may not be stable. Now, it should be politically stable, economically stable, and socially stable. Now, to do that, now, okay, maybe the language policy. Now, uh, Sinhala, Tamil, English. Now, government has recognized English as the common language. Then, foreign, that's also very important, non-aligned, uh, free and progressive foreign policy, forging close ties of regional cooperation in order to secure sta stability of political, defense, economic, trade, cultural sphere. Now, we call Sri Lanka as a non-aligned country. But previously, this non-aligned means it's like a Western and the Russian country, Russian Federation. But now, you can see, in addition to the, these USA, European countries, Western countries, and the Russian countries, now, Russian Federation, they do not have much control like previously. But now, there are newcomers like China, India, now you can think whether Sri Lanka is having this non-aligned policy as previously, because previously also we had very uh, biased relationship with these uh, uh, US uh, Western countries. During that time, we didn't have much uh, support from the Russian Federation and other things, but now we we are getting support from everywhere. Till we are getting why we think we are an unaligned nation, but due, there are some uh, now China they are giving so many loans, so many uh, projects. Now someone can say, okay, now Sri Lanka is mainly biased towards China. Someone can say, no, Sri Lanka is more biased towards India. Uh, because someone can say, no, it's okay because they are within our neighbors. Now, India is a neighbor. Okay, China also in Asia. Uh, sometimes, some may can say it would be better than bias for the Western countries like that. Okay, but our main... Uh, policy framework is normalized. Then environmental management. That's also very important thing. Now, whatever the project we are implementing, we have to think about the global environment as well as the local environment. Now, previously, we are uh, considered mainly on the local environment aspects, but now, you have to think about the global environment aspects as well. That means these carbon emissions. Uh, sometimes we may can say uh, new carbon neutrality. So many new uh, developments are there in the uh, other countries. We also may have to adopt for these policies. Then social protection or also the regional development. Now here I am not going into the details of these things and I, I am not expecting you to go through all the things and to memorize. Just read these things and think by yourself whether Sri Lanka has implemented these policies in a proper or appropriate manner and there are so many. Now if you if I ask about the transportation policy, you can easily say, okay, advantages of having a policy and what are the disadvantages of having lack of implementation of this policy and what kind of impact to the people. Now, we'll just go through in detail about the... Uh, two policies one is national energy policy and other one is national transportation policy but uh, this national energy policy 
it is a gasseted policy which policy spells out ways and means of steering the energy sector in transition to power the nation and its social market economy this is a national energy policy not the electricity policy energy means electricity as well as the petroleum resources as well okay now what are the primary objectives of these policies now here you can see this policy was gasseted in 2019 august 9 that means this is the first policy sri lanka has gasseted in a proper way because there are so many other policies most of the policies still in the draft stages but this national energy policy in 2019 they gasseted under this gasset okay this gasset number what are the primary objectives now in primary objectives ensure energy security now here please do not limit this only to the electricity this is the energy energy security through supplies that are cleaner secure economical and reliable to provide convenient affordable energy services to support socially equitable development in sri lanka now here it's very clearly mentioned to provide convenient affordable energy services now now i think previous years we may have to stay along the queues to uh, purchase our food so many things whether now you can think whether these policies have been implemented in a proper way okay you can say due to the financial crisis and other things this can happen but still why these financial crisis happen to sri lanka okay it can you can say we had so many policies but lack of implementation of these policies or maybe uh, corruption that's also a, one of the key policy items I, I i told this the same after national security second most important policy is to free from corruption okay that's the thing okay national energy the policy is the founded on 10 pillars now you can see uh, we will learn about what are the 10 pillars but uh, do not memorize these things i am not asking uh, as uh, a question like uh, write, write the 10 pillars of national energy policy do not expect the question like that okay uh, in when you go through the previous questions you can see what kind of this general format i have used to prepare the question uh, i never asked you to write the elements of the national energy policy but okay maybe when you write your answer to the particular question you can write some important aspects of these things now assuring energy security now here you can give some examples like staying queues along uh, uh, during the previous time to obtain the fuel now you are telling assuring energy security providing providing access to energy services now primary secondary energy supplies of the country will be secure with the adequacy and reliability now if we have that kind of policy implemented then do you think that kind of thing uh, inadequacy will happen uh, discontinuity of the fuel supplies that may should not happen okay you can say with the so many other factors those were the influencing factors 
uh, that leads to uh, discuss this assuring energy security concept. Okay, that may be true, but if we are having a proper policy mechanism implement, we may not foresee that kind of situation. They providing access to energy services, access to reliable, convenient, affordable, equitable, and quality energy services will be provided to all citizens to improve their living standards and to engage in gainful economic activity. I think uh, by adopting this QR mechanism, okay, initially it may have failed, initial days, but later people adopt to this uh, mechanism. Government also had a very strict, stringent restriction about the fuel uh, distribution. Because of that, we may able to overcome the situation like staying along the queues for a maybe sometimes more than 24 hours the two days people are staying along the queues ultimately they stay along the queues and they may not be able to get the relevant fuel con uh, food but after introducing this qr system access somewhat become uh, easy now that's the main thing. Now, when you have a situation like that, if you have a, if you know the concept of this national energy policy, then these government decision makers they have to develop some mechanism to provide some because here they mention equitable. Okay, access to reliable, convenient, affordable, equitable. Equitable means everyone should get the same uh, uh, manner to access this energy services. Then providing energy services at the optimum cost to the national economy. That's also a very important thing. Now, okay, maybe due to the our foreign currency issues and other things our fuel cost may be high but that should be the optimum cost they should not take undue advantage now recently there are so many fuel hikes then everyone faced the question whether these uh, fuel hikes are reasonable or not because the fuel formula those things are not transparent. No one do not know what would be the landed price of the diesel liter, what would be the landed price of the pet uh, petrol liter. Like that, we do not know. If we have a proper transparent mechanism, then you know, okay, due to the uh, escalation of the uh, US dollar, we may have to pay more. But people may think, government is taking undue tax or maybe undue profit uh, since government needs money they may think they have uh, imposed so many taxes now why we do not know the exact pricing mechanism or pricing formula of this food improving energy efficiency and the conservation that's also a very important thing now it's like bringing low quality drugs that have an impact to the patient same way if we bring the low quality uh, electrical equipment low quality machines then low quality vehicles then we have to waste so much energy energy means it's it's a uh, we are yeah, now presently our main primary source of energy is the fuel oil for our transportation sector, our power sector. We use so much fuel. Then we have to use this electricity or the uh, liquid fuel 
in a more efficient and conserved manner. Then enhancing self reliance. Now, how do you enhance the self reliance? Because we do not have gas, we do not have the petroleum resources, we have only our indigenous energy resources. Now, our main objective is to enhance the portfolio of the this indigenous energy resources. So that's very important. Uh, enhancing self reliance. Now, for the power sector, okay, we are having hydro, we are having solar, we are having wind, but still we depend on the fossil fuel as well. Now, if something happened for a coal ship delay in a coal shipment, delay in a uh, fuel oil shipment, that have a direct impact to power sector, not only the power sector, transportation sector as well. I think you may can remember previously, we may have to wait until the fuel diesel or the petrol ship is arrived to Sri Lanka. Uh, but if we can utilize these indigenous energy resources, then we can enhance our self-reliance on the energy sector. But now people are not going for, for the cooking using the biomass and other things. People rely on the LP gas or the electricity, but then we can enhance the uh, mix of renewable resources, indigenous renewable resources in the uh, electricity energy mix that indirectly uh, enhance the pre, pre, uh, utilization of the indigenous energy resources. Okay, if we can give the uh, reasonable uh, cost for the solar power development, wind power development, and if we can reduce our electricity generation cost, that will enhance the self-reliance on the indigenous energy resources. Then caring for the environment, that's also a very important thing. Now, utilization of fossil fuel that have adverse impact on the environment, to reduce that adverse impact. Now, uh, all over the world, there is a trend of optimum utilization of the renewable energy resources. Now, why mainly uh, these companies or the other countries, they want to go for a aggressive renewable energy targets, mainly to maintain this low carbon intensity. That's why I told previously we mainly concern on the local environment aspects, but now we have to think about the global environment aspect as well. Okay. Under national energy policy, okay, now here they mention enhancing self-reliance, care in the environment, both leads to utilization, more utilization of the renewable energy, but they have clearly introduced another pillar to show the importance of the uh, renewable energy, enhancing the share of renewable energy. Indigenous renewable energy resources will be developed to the optimum level to attain sustainability and higher degree of resilience in the energy sector. Because that's the main thing to sustainability and higher degree of resilience. Resilience means if something happened, how to overcome that situation. Maybe if we do not have fossil fuel, buy dollars to buy the fossil fuel, whether we can uh, provide the power electricity through the renewable energy resources because this when you use these renewable energy resources no need to pay any energy cost no need to use uh, foreign currencies to procure these uh, fuel then 
strengthening good governance and energy sector now that's also very important thing now everywhere in the world most of the investor investors invest on the energy sector uh, related investment now uh, in sri lanka also you can see there are so many discussions going on uh, the uh, government and the other parties about the uh, unsolicited proposals uh, so many uh, unsolicited proposals these companies will come and uh, uh, submit to the government regarding the development of energy sector now if we have a very good governance transparent mechanism then people may think sri lanka is a very good country for the investment but that uh, our uh, now this is only the energy policy but our key policies also they have mentioned uh, it should be corruption free uh, policy framework should be developed now good uh, strengthening the good governance in the energy sector means uh, enhance this corruption free environment in the energy sector by mainly lot of foreign direct investors fdis they prefer to invest in the energy sector than other sectors they secure land for future energy infrastructure that's also very important thing uh, now land is a scarce resource and let's say if we want to uh, develop a particular land as a uh, energy infrastructure now itself we have to earmark this land and uh, this particular institution they should uh, uh, procure and uh, uh, the strategic locations they should uh, earmark and secure in advance that's the most important thing now think about this recent activity about the say, uh, this electricity board hambantota uh, pole pitia line i think almost let's say two to three years that was dragged due to a one specific issue that means yeah, now that's a very important transmission line for the sri lankan power sector then if we can identify those things in advance and earmark this location and secure these locations then the implementation act that would be very immensely uh, uh, advantage same way now let's say now sri lanka definitely they, they will develop for a future uh, highway network new highway network then if the road development authority or maybe the other government institution if they can earmark these locations and they have to clearly inform to the local government authorities now future roads uh, government intend to develop a future road in this area then they should uh, not grant approval for any uh, construction permanent construction activities like that that's why uh, now when you go and go to the, what uh, local government authority office to get the approval for your house they will say okay you have to get the street line clearance now bank will provide the loan uh, once you submit the street line clearance why this street line clearance now this local government body they will give a letter indicating that there won't be any new roads or or this may this particular location uh, may, may be free of future development of any major road or maybe they are uh, they are not taking this particular land for the some road preservation like that they will give this street line clearance but uh, they may provide the street line clearance only for maybe next two to three years 
development based on these two to three year development uh, to develop a country we should have a very long term development plan it's like a master plan now based on the master plan if they can provide these clearances automatically future issues will be reduced but Sri Lanka is a very poor developing country. We do not have sufficient money to uh, pay these compensation to these people and secure the locations in advance. But according to this national energy policy, they have clearly mentioned for future energy infrastructure. Okay, this particular developing agencies it could be uh, petroleum corporate uh, electricity board or, or whatever the uh, now okay there are private entities who are developing this uh, fuel uh, distribution then maybe the future uh, oil refinery those things government has to uh, earmark and secure the land then providing opportunity for innovation and entrepreneurship now that's also very important thing now according to the national energy policy uh, that policy itself say enhancing the share of renewable energy then you have to give the opportunities to the sri lankan investors that the foreign investors definitely foreign investors also have to give then give an opportunity that's that's the only you can get the foreign currency inflows into the sri lankan economy yeah, as soon as the sri lankan entrepreneur try to uh, invest in a sri lankan project he will utilize the foreign currency which are available in sri lanka uh, but for the payments and other things he has to pay to the other countries but let's say if foreign direct investor invest to some particular project he will bring the capital from the, his country and invest in sri lanka now you can see there are 10 pillars these 10 pillars they have split into a three categories. One is we call as the energy security, other we call it as the energy sustainability, then energy equity. Now you can see one, two, nine under energy equity. That means equitable pattern. Assuring energy security. That means you have to assure the energy security to all people providing access to energy services providing access to energy services then securing land for future energy infrastructure that's also energy equity now why securing land for future energy infrastructure that means to provide the access to the people to assure the energy security that's why you are providing uh, securing this land for future energy infrastructure now these three they have categorized under energy equity now three four five ten under energy security three providing energy services at the optimum cost energy efficiency and conservation enhancing self-reliance that means self-reliance means you are trying to enhance the energy security that means your dependence on foreign fuel you are trying to reduce then number 10 providing opportunities for innovation and entrepreneurship that means within sri lanka you are trying to uh, develop own resources then six seven eight and the energy sustainability caring for environment, enhancing the share of renewable energy, strengthen good governance in the energy sector, the energy sustainability. Why 
if you have a good governance transparent mechanism most of these foreign direct investors they will come and invest in this uh, energy sector activity then we will go through something about the national transport policy actually this is a draft policy this is not a published gazetted policy it's a draft policy uh, okay maybe this draft almost they have to uh gasset but up to now it has not been gasseted why because if you gasset this kind of uh policy it 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 will consider it as a law of the country then you have to abide now when you abide these things then you have to have very good uh provisions to uh, adopt this kind of policy in national energy policy okay there are a lack of things but uh, out of that 10 items 10 pillars uh, now it's like a uh, law of the country now here an efficient and economic transport system is vital to sustain and enhance economic development and quality of life of the country now what are the objectives of this policy demonstrate the need of transport infrastructure and services to be efficient and be in line with the development goals of the national provincial and rural level in Sri Lanka the most important thing now think about our highway whether these highways were developed by considering the development goals of national provincial and rural levels in sri lanka okay now country should develop whatever the road network that road network will support for the transportation by looking at the overall goals of the national, provincial and rural level. Okay, you can say, okay, by developing the Southern Highway, there are a lot of things improved in that uh, area. Definitely, yes. Then why you are not develop the Central Highway in the same priority? Someone can ask that kind of thing. Okay then we have to identify the priorities and based on the priorities since we do not have much capital investment within sri lanka we have to prioritize based on the overall policy i am not saying this is correct or this is wrong every time as an engineer you have to evaluate these things and you have to give the uh, overall picture, overall aspects with positives and the negatives you have to highlight to the decision maker to make a correct decision that's the most important thing then provide necessary guidance to stakeholders in transportation sector to improve transport systems to achieve strategic objectives and priorities of the government guide on the necessary investment priorities for achieving expected outcomes in the transportation sector and achieve global trends in development targets provide platform to enhance the efficiency in long-term decision making regarding infrastructure improvement and service management in transportation sector now you can think okay our transportation sector we are having a bus, a government operated bus, private operators, then uh, railway network, still whether our railway network is very e efficient, those things you can think. Okay. Then, same way in the national transportation policy, also develop based on uh, several 
principle. Now, the national energy policy is developed under 10 pillars. Now, here, policy principle, accessible transport, transport system, whatever the thing, it should be access. Now, access to the energy infrastructure. Now, here, access, accessible transport system. Then, this transport system should be energy efficiency and environmental protection. Now, let's say if we are trying to develop the the road network and try to enhance all the uh, diesel fuel driven buses then whether it's having the environmental protection that you have to think about okay maybe if you want to adopt the electricity uh, or the complex natural gas cng vehicles those two things you have to think now then also the electrification of railway network then convert the uh, uh, sorry the, promote the utilization of electrical vehicle those things you have to think uh, increase safety and security that's also very much important now when you watch the tv every day you can see there are a lot of accidents there are a lot of people killed uh, or died due to this uh, accident that means every time good transportation policy means if you adopt this concept you may not hear these kind of accidents and other things now problem i said uh, now what do you think about the most safest transportation methodology in the world okay now someone can say this is the safest this is the safest this is the safest but up to now i think the flight services airline services are the most safest uh, transportation methodology because let's say in a country now in Sri Lanka, maybe particular day, there will be around at least five people will die due to the road accident. Maybe when you consider India or maybe you when you consider the China or the worldwide, more than let's say definitely around 250, 300, sometimes more than thousand people will die due to the road accidents road accident but in flights if in a country in a let's say small helicopter crash that will be a world news okay why it's a world news that they consider it as the most safest uh, transportation mechanism this airline service now very rarely we are uh, we heard there will be a huge big plane crash otherwise it's very uh, seldomly that kind of thing will happen but train accidents bus accidents every day some place in the world that will happen when you consider the whole world maybe more than 500 around thousand people will die per day but for the flight that kind of things may not happen. That's the safety and security aspect. Then positive contribution to the economy. That's also very important thing. When you adopt a proper national transportation policy. Now, okay, in our country as a draft, we are having a very good national transportation policy. Issue is, okay, once this draft convert into a gasset, okay, maybe government will publish it as a gasset and that will uh, make it as a law of the country. But, but if you could not implement this transportation policy as intended, you may not get any benefit. That you have to think. That means once you implement this policy, you have to implement these policies to get the positive contribution to the economy. That's the main important thing. Once you develop the transportation mechanism, now 
think about this light rail train if that project move ahead surely that will leave the uh, huge traffic along that particular uh, area but due to a very bad inconsistent decision making this particular project government has cancelled okay maybe there are reasons to the government to cancel that kind of project but you should not cancel the mature project. Now, same thing happened to the sample coal power plants. These are very mature projects. These mature projects, government should not cancel suddenly. Once, once they cancel the mature project, there will be a lot of repercussion because all the other things now in power sector, all these transmission lines, all the things, those investments are very uh, long term investment. Implementations may take around five to eight years. These transmission lines, same way, these LRT, these feasibility study, they have carried out, then surveys they have carried out, all the things, and uh, they have your master uh, road, uh, sorry, lands and other things to secure the land, everything, and suddenly they cancel. Now, we have another main thing is once the uh, other institutions know that this kind of project will happen in near future, they may not invest to the other uh, network developers. Maybe the road network and other developments, they may not uh, facilitate. Why? Because they know that there will be a huge project uh, come come into the near uh, implement in near future, and that will change the uh, priorities of their investment. The integration of land use and transport planning that's also very important principle they utilize. Then what are the policy goals? Now these are the policy principles with this policy principles, their main goals or the objectives promote the efficient movement of people and goods in order to support sustainable economic development. Now I think this transportation policy was developed before the national energy policy. Now this national energy policy Okay, it also took more than five to eight years to gather that particular policy, national transport policy. They discuss and develop this uh, draft before the national energy policy. But up to now, they were not able to gather this policy and make it as a law of the country. Okay propose social inclusion to allow equitable access to all, provide safe transport system that minimizes damages, injuries, and loss of lives. Now, that's the main important thing. Now, due to lack of this transportation policy, now just think about the uh, pricing formula for these uh, bus fares. If you have a proper policy, okay, now we are having uh, some policy, they say if the cost uh, increase more than 4%, you have to give the uh, some uh, bus, hike, bus fare hike like that. But do you think is that the correct way? Only we can hear some person is appearing in the TV and say we are not running the operating the bus if we do not get the bus hike. Uh, bus fare high maybe next day they mention okay according to the transportation policy now these costs are increased because of that we are increasing that's not the way you have to increase the bus fare hikes and other things uh, you should have a transparent mechanism people do not know now uh, yes uh, now they may increase the bus fares like okay 32 rupees 33 rupees 38 108 no one will get this balance 
the now in a countries other developing countries they are not use cash to day to day transaction they use prepaid card mechanism or some other method to take the ticket and only they will use the screening mechanism or maybe they will use uh, tra uh, uh, travel card systems it's like a pre Paid cash system, you can transfer uh, the sufficient credits to the these prepaid cards, and you can utilize them. No one will complain about these change money issues. Nothing will happen, and uh, people will have a uh, very calm and quiet, and everyone will have an equal opportunity to the access to these transport mechanisms provide safe transport protect the environment sustainability and improve health now with the introduction of this emission testing somewhat uh, government may able to achieve that environmental sustainability but uh, are we achieving it as intended now if we adopt that as uh, the law that should be applicable to the every vehicle but more all these government vehicle most of these uh, forces vehicle they have excluded those things and these uh, ctv buses they were excluded initially but i think now they have introduced the law to everyone and, but previously they didn't adopt that kind of thing why they know that all these government vehicles they do not maintain in a such a way to pass that particular emission test but when you go along the road you can see majority of the vehicle which emit the emissions belongs to the government but now okay maybe they i think they have changed the rule uh, that's the main important thing in the national transportation policy Okay, with that, we will conclude the uh, part related to the national policies. Here, you may uh, try to gather some points mainly related to why these inconsistent policies, how that have an impact to the national economy. And maybe also you can give the examples of the political influences maybe the office officers influences those influences will have a negative impact on implementation of the national policy but in sri lanka we are having a uh, policies but the issue is these policies we are not adopting in a consistent manner maybe one government will come and say okay it's a typical example is this highway still highway uh port city you can give an example then uh light railway project lrt project sample coal power plant project those are the major projects okay they are now, now most of these industrial zones now these industrial zones they are starting uh start initiated or started uh, in the locations where in which that particular minister is uh, representing but that does not mean the correct location now we, if let's say if you if you want to uh, declare industrial zone it should be closer to a airport or closer to the uh, port like that you have to think okay then other main thing is you have to provide the infrastructure like electricity water everything without providing anything because of the political in interferences these government institutes itself they uh, publish this is the industrial so no one will comment invest on these industrial zones but they have to spend so much 
uh, other expenses because once you declare it as an industrial zone, uh, this BOI or that institution, they have to provide the electricity supply, water supplies, and other infrastructure facilities. Okay. We will learn, go to the our second part. This is the Sri Lankan economy. This is the snapshot. Now you can see the comparison in June 2022 and June 2023. I think everyone can remember the period June 2022. It's a very uh, critical time Sri Lanka has passed during that time. You can see, it, uh, sorry, it is November. Uh, uh, sorry, November. Uh, inflation is uh, around 65 percent. Now, in June 2023, it's around 4.6 because we do not know whether these values are perfectly represent the current inflation or not these are published by the central bank of sri lanka now you can see if the inflation is 4.4.6 people may feel that every product is cheap okay maybe comparatively it may be cheap but due to the loss of money value you may not feel that kind of uh, feeling you may get it. okay then the economic growth previously in quarter 3 2022 it's 11.8 percent still it's minus 11.5 but you can see it's somewhat improved then dollar rate during that time 362 now it's 323 you can see the treasury interest rates now during that time government has uh, because no one will give the money to the sri lankan government now compare in november 2022 now to run the country government need money now government has to give the social benefits to the poor people government has to pay the salaries government has to pay the uh, other basic needs of the people lot of things government has to government expenditure is there huge government expenditure now to uh, to incur that kind of government expenditure government needs the revenue now how do we government get the money now previously we took so many foreign loans foreign uh, funding facilities to bridge this gap but due to this economic collapse uh, we didn't get Sri Lanka didn't get sufficient money then government tried to uh, get the money through the internal mechanism now this internal mechanism means they introduced this uh, treasury base now previously you can see to get the money for the one year treasury bill they are paying 28.7 percent interest rate now 30.7 interest rate now think that means if they buy 100 rupees through a treasury bond they have to uh, reserve it's a 28 Sri Lankan rupees to pay the interest after one year that means at the beginning itself they will have only 72 rupees or 73 rupees to pay to you utilize that particular money for a, some activity now for that uh, utilization also governments just do it for some social benefit or pay the salary to the government employees. During that period, nothing that government could not able to spend anything for the investment opportunities or to promote the export-oriented company or whatever the 
to promote the tourism like that okay tourism automatically people came to sri lanka but otherwise by getting 100 rupees if they allocate 29 sri lankan rupees to pay the interest at the end only 71 sri lankan rupees they will have to spend out of that all the things they spend for the just pay the salaries and other things then automatically uh, uh, sri lankan economy will collapse further and further and now you can see with this present uh, uh, imf mechanisms and stringent uh, uh, other control now they have managed to reduce that to 11.48 now they have not floored any three year one previous okay five year bonds also they have mentioned reduce the interest rate to 30. now here now in other main thing is now if you may when you watch the news you can hear local debt restructuring now this is the data now government has to pay uh, to some people now persons who invest on these treasury bills after one year or after the three years or after 50 years government has to pay this particular interest rate now for the five-year interest uh, investment in a treasury bill every year they have to pay 28 percent 28 percent 28 percent that means within five years they can they will earn more than what they invest now let's say three year 30 percent means after third year they will get almost 93 percent of their investment now do you think country can survive by paying that kind of interest now for let's say if the government wants to pay the 30 percent interest to the treasury in bond interest rates government has to invest that amount to a, some particular project or any investment category which will gain more than this 30 percent but government could not invest anything from this uh, treasury base only they manage to pay the salaries of the people that does not give any uh, return to the government government uh, uh, then uh, this hello uh, this domestic restructuring at uh, domestic debt restructuring means now they will request these treasury bond interest rates to reduce the interest rate or they may say after one year period we may not able to pay this 28.7 we will pay it maybe in three years with some installment mechanism like that those are the way they will try to uh, restructure the loans in domestic then other things nothing unemployment population per capita income those are the common things this is the snapshot of the sri lankan economy now we will just go through uh for the Okay, it may be too much for you. Uh, Okay, we'll see. Uh, 
this is we will try to do it today understand in the economic terms that would be very important uh, i can't read the question fully can use for investment We have any questions can we can you raise because i think within 10 minutes we may not be able to complete this particular topic okay, i mean uh, you asked that the uh, depth increased yeah. so you can use it depth the answer is you can use it for global investments and uh, other exports things you can share it uh, okay actually this local debt debt restructuring we are not government may not use it as an investment actually government will delay the payment of interest to the relevant parties that's the thing they are telling because now in previous just this previous slide now you can think now if you now this is november 2022 now let's say uh, there are treasury bills they have uh, released for the market for the 365 days uh, that means after one year government has to pay 28.7 percent interest let's say if you buy 1 million then government has to pay 28 percent 28 percent interest rate now it's not a 1 million it's like a billions of treasury bills they have flowed now let's say 1 billion they have flowed that means 28 percent that means 20 to, uh, 287 million they have to allocate for the particular uh, payment for the interest rates then with this local debt restructuring they will put uh, some ceiling let's say we will give 10 percent maybe then out uh, out of this 287 million government will allocate 100 million only for the payment of interest rates and they will request the particular banks to discuss with the people who invest on the uh, these treasury bills to pay okay maybe they may can say okay maximum we can give 10 percent then they have to forget about that other part or otherwise they may say okay we can give the this 20 other balance to an 18.7 percent maybe within five years time like that they will government will say that's the way they will go for the local debt restructure but that you can't use it as the investment but the other main important thing is indirectly now let's say instead of uh, if you do not have debt restructuring government has to uh, fine 200 now particular example let's say 280 million for the 1 billion investment uh, treasury bond 280 million at the end of the first year let's, if they de restructure the debt for the 100 million that balance 180 million they can utilize for the other purposes but the problem is since we do not have sufficient uh, revenue within the country to pay the basic needs of the government that means what are the basic needs they have to do the huge social welfare schemes maybe the some of the maybe the other poor people we have to give the other subsidiaries then all the government uh, per, uh, employees they have to pay the salaries then the pension those things itself now i think uh, our government monthly expenditure it's around 600 billion with these all the other uh, tax revenues and other revenues they will get around 200 250 billion now that balance 450 500 billion it's a deficit now that to cover that deficit maybe we have to get the foreign assistance assistance through a loan mechanism or we have to uh, 
float a treasury bills or whatever the thing. Uh, or otherwise, we have to go for a stringent economic restrictions like uh, uh, cut the salaries or cut the other social benefits like that. Now, that those things I will explain to you later the with the, this economics because i am not going to teach you anything about the economics i am just explaining you the concepts of the present challenges and how to overcome the very general thing okay any other questions or oh, it clear please Do you have any questions? Anyway, please go through the notes. I think my next lecture is on Monday.